Okay, so hello YouTube. This is WF7 at Homebrew back again, and um, wanted to clarify a few things. I figured out how to boost the microphone audio for one, so you should be able to hear the audio a little better. I'm um, still using the same Kluge system, ancient microphone, and uh, PowerPoint, <laughs> but I think it'll work well enough. So this is um, another circuit. Um, I believe. Uh, I think this is the 20 meter one, if I'm not mistaken. And I've also got uh, Microsoft Excel pulled up here with resonant frequency calculations um, done. And so what you see here, I think I can do a better job explaining this than the previous video. I was kind of fighting with my computer at that time too, and trying to learn Puff again and a lot of things. So um, what this is here really is um, a parallel and series resonance circuit at, uh, in this case, on 20 meters. So if you have, so this letter C here on this diagram is an, a parallel LC circuit. So here, if you look at C, it's a three nanofarad capacitor, so it's like 3000 picofarad in parallel with a 40 nano Henry inductor, uh, which is about 0.04 micro Henry's, if you want to think of it that way. So when you have a parallel LC circuit, um, what happens is at resonance, the reactance is pretty much zero. It's like a short circuit at that frequency of resonance. And so that's what this is here. Um, well, actually, I should take that back. I said the opposite thing. <laughs> I'm sorry. At resonance, it's an open circuit. I get these confused. Um, so a parallel, a parallel LC circuit at resonance is an open circuit, um, very high impedance. Um, so what you have here is um, at C, you have a parallel LC circuit resonant at 20 meters, and it's an open circuit at 20 meters. So my 20 meter signal comes in, port one here, comes down, counters this, doesn't do anything, proceeds to go towards through A and B and through to port two here, which is the output. So A and B, I have an L and a C again, but these are in series. Series LC circuit at resonance is gonna be a short circuit. So very, very low reactance. You know, essentially no reactants at all um, at uh, the resonant frequency of 20 meters. So the 20 meter signal can sort of pass through here unimpeded to port two. So that's the idea. And what happens is when you get away from the resonant frequency, so when I get out here to, you know, you know nine or 10 megahertz or something, or I'm up here at whatever it is, you know, 18, 19 megahertz, when you're at those other frequencies, um, what happens is this parallel LC circuit's no longer at resonance, and you're going to start to see um, less and less kind of reactance to that frequency. So those frequencies start to go shunted to ground. So those are the unwanted frequencies. Those are the frequencies that are outside of our passband, and those are the ones we don't want to hear. So we don't want those to get through to port two, which is our output here. So you can kind of think of, you know, port one's the antenna, port two is your radio, kind of how to look at it, I guess. So as you get off from resonance um, um, with the parallel LC, you'll start to see more and more, it's kind of more like a short to ground, RF short to ground. Um, and uh, with the series LC circuit, you sort of get the opposite. Uh, when you're not in resonance, anything outside of resonance, you're going to start seeing high impedance. So signals will get blocked. So if I have you know an AM broadcast station or some kind of muck over here that's really far out of the 20 meter band, it's going to encounter this series LC circuit. It's going to see a high impedance and it's not going to be able to really get to port two. It's going to be severely attenuated because there's going to be a high reactance there and it's not going to really make it through. So that's really what this circuit is. It's not a Chebyshev or a Butterworth or anything fancy like that. This is a real quick and dirty sort of series parallel LC combination. Um, but I found it was pretty effective. And as you can see here, it models pretty well. I mean, there's a pretty sharp drop off um, in terms of uh, frequency response and attenuation. So 
I can sort of step through this. I'm just hitting the page up button here, and you can see you know, 11 megahertz, I'm about 31 dB down in signal from the 20 meter band. And down at 13 and 13.6 megahertz, I'm at 6 dB down. So, you know, 6 dB is, uh, you know, four times or one fourth of the signal, you could think of it that way, uh, as what the input is. And when I get up to 14 megahertz, boom, it's basically no attenuation, 0 0.1 dB up to 14.2 megahertz, 0 0.01. So that's pretty much the whole four, uh, 20 meter band, 14.35.4. Now, you know, this is of course a theoretical uh, little calculating tool here. Um, actual filter, you know, is probably not gonna behave exactly like this. Um, and uh, what I'm gonna do is build these filters and uh, test them and I have a little, kind of a portable vector net network analyzer that I bought a few, I don't know, it's probably been two months ago now. It's a real uh, cheap one um, that is all over eBay and Amazon. I forget what it's called now. I think it's Nano VNA. Uh, I'm not really sure if I know completely how to use that tool yet. Um, so there's going to be a little bit of a learning curve on that, but it's, I think it's pretty simple. And it ought to be able to show me a graph similar you know, to this graph here on Puff. Um, to make sure I'm kind of in the ballpark with this filtering. Now, some of these values are a little bit funky. Um, you know, I can probably get a, a 3,000 or you know, 0.003 microfarad kind of capacitor. Uh, 40 nanohenries is kind of an oddball. It's really low inductance. So this one's a little bit strange. Um, I think the 21 microhenry and the 6 picofarad should be pretty doable, though, um, for the series LC. So... If nothing else, I'm going to definitely put in series LC filters in this. Uh, and if I can put in that parallel one as well, that'll help the response a little bit. Makes it, I believe it makes this a little bit sharper. These skirts drop off a little faster when you have both the series and the parallel. And of course, you know, you could build another, put another parallel LC here and other series. And you probably keep on making this tighter and tighter. But this is a pretty tight response already, so I don't... I don't think I want to mess with it, and I don't want to add more part count. Um, if anything, I may just do the series and get rid of the parallel. Um, this spreadsheet over here was just LC calculations, um, really, really simple. Um, so if I look over here, you know, it's one over two pi times the square root of L and C, and uh, that's really all there is to it to figure out um, your resonant frequency for an LC circuit. Um, pretty straightforward. So uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm going to cut it off here, and probably in the next day or so, I'm going to start trying to figure out, see if I can get these parts together. I may have to order some parts. I don't know. I hope not. But And uh, start testing them on the Nano VNA uh, while I'm awaiting a toroid so I can make my transformer for the input impedance transformation from the antenna to the 602. <laughs> So I'll be playing with filters while I'm waiting for the Amazon order to come in for that. And uh, should be able to do some videos, hopefully um, showing the nano VNA. That'll be kind of fun. And um, I, I don't know, I think the whole process is pretty fun. Some of these tools are a little weird. I mean, Puff is an ancient weird tool. I know there's much better filter design software packages, but you know, there's a learning curve with those. And this is one that I'm kind of familiar with and it's super, super simple. Um, and it does the job for this. So. Anyway, um, that's about it. Uh, let's see if I can cut this video off. I don't know. I forget what the hot key is for this. Um, something weird. Um, but uh, uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and uh, thank you for watching.